Hey guys and welcome back. So in the previous nugget we had just explored the use of environment variables and this proved to be a pretty effective way to be able to pass in our credentials without having to continually retype them over and over again. We did notice though if we wanted total persistence we had to include these within our bash rc file and ultimately this was an unencrypted file. What we're going to do is explore how we can introduce encryption so that we can encrypt the environment in which we're going to pass in these credentials. Now the type of encryption we're going to use is a very famous one called GPG which is GNU Privacy Guard. It's been around for a very long time and it's very well respected so we know it's pretty good encryption we've got. So first things first, let's see how we can install GPG and begin to get all of this set up then. So once again, no surprises, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Okay, so let's go back into our directory. Let's go into our virtual environment and we'll activate it. And what I'm going to say is Python 3 pip install and I'm going to say Python GNU PG. So we'll hit enter. This should now install GPG. And there we have it, successfully installed, no problem at all. So the first thing we're going to have to do here is to generate some keys. So if I just cd out of this directory, what I'm going to do is say GPG and then dash dash gen hyphen key. So what I'm going to do is pass in some information. This is going to identify my key. This is effectively just GNU PG taking this information as a user ID to identify the key. So my name is John McGovern. Hit enter. So my email address I'll pass in is ipv0 and I'll say at gmail.com. Hit enter. Is this okay? I'll just say O for okay and hit enter. And now what it's going to do is tell me to enter a passphrase to protect my key. So really you want to use something secure. Now again I'm being bad so I'm just going to say John key. Hit enter and it's going to warn me because it's a bad password. Again don't use this type of key for real. But I'll just say take this one anyway. And I'll reconfirm it by saying John key, hit enter. And now it's generated my cryptographic key. So what I'm going to do now is create a new file. So I'll say new file. And let's just save it as. So within my directory, let's just call this one nuggets.txt. Something pretty simple. Now what I want to do here is to define my environment variable. So I'll just call this environment variable default username as opposed to just username. And I'm going to make this equal to the value John because John is the username. And let's create a new environment variable called default password. And what's that going to be equal to? You guessed it, Cisco. And that is all we need. So let's save this here. We go back to our terminal, clear the screen or clear the screen <laughs> and let's cat this. So clearly we can see we have the default username is John. The default password is Cisco. So we want to take this text file here, nuggets.txt, and we want to create an encrypted version of this text file because obviously anyone can just cat this file and read it. This is not what we want. So let's use GPG to use symmetric encryption to create an encrypted version of this file. So how do we do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Let's clear the screen and all we'll say is GPG dash dash and we'll say symmetric and we'll say O for output and then let's just create a file name. So I'll just call this file whatever we want encrypted.env.g and now we need to specify the file we want to encrypt. So we created a file called nuggets.txt. That is the file we want to encrypt. So let's just hit enter. Now I need to create a passphrase for this. Now this is a session key. It doesn't actually have to match key which I created earlier. So I'll just make this passphrase cbt nuggets. Again, use one much more secure than this in real life. So cbt nuggets, hit enter. And bam, there we have it. So again, if we cat nuggets.txt, we can see our environment variables. But if we cat the encrypted file, which is the version of that, look at this. We just have this encrypted gibberish. So now that we've actually used this nuggets.txt file to generate the encrypted version, we've got no use for the nuggets one. So let's just remove this. This is storing pretty sensitive information. So ls, now all we have is this encrypted.env.gg. So again, Encrypted, that is all good. So how am I going to be able to decrypt this? Well, what I can say here is gpg dash dash decrypt and then just specify the name of the file which is going to be encrypted.env.gpg and if I hit enter, it's going to just decrypt that file. So you might be thinking, well, where is the security here? Because ultimately I'm not having to type in the passphrase and that is because I specified that passphrase at the start of this session. So ultimately this is going to be good for now. I can just keep using this without having to continually type in the passphrase. If I happen to shut down my computer or restart it, this would effectively wipe the session and when I go to decrypt the file, 
then it's going to prompt me for my passphrase again which is going to be held within cache meaning I can just keep decrypting it without always having to type in the passphrase. Now again if you don't want to have to shut down the computer and you just want to for security reasons no longer have the session in cache what we can say here is echo and then in capital letters we'll say reload agents and then we'll use the pipe and what we'll say is gpg hyphen connect hyphen agent and this should now flush this session so if I hit enter we get the ok if I arrow up and I try to use the command gpg decrypt encrypted env.gpg hit enter now it's going to force me to put in the passphrase because effectively that session has been killed so I'll just say cbt nuggets hit enter and now because I've put in the passphrase, it's going to decrypt and again I can just keep decrypting this in cache. So how can we actually use this within our script then? So once again what I'll do is I'll copy the last runbook, runbook 4, and I'll create a new one called runbook5.py. So let's open this one up, go to runbook5. So this is going to look really quite similar to what we did before. The difference here though is that the environment variable name has changed. It's not going to be username. Our environment variable within our file is default underscore username and again this new one is going to be default underscore password because again like I say once we decode or rather decrypt our file this is the value here default username so we want to grab that to get the value John and default password is going to give us the value of Cisco. So we're snagging the correct keys here now but how do we actually pass in this particular file encrypted.env.gpg into our Python script. So I'll just push Control S to save this file. So now the way we can push this encrypted file into our Python script is say env and then we'll take the dollar sign, we'll open up our parentheses and what I'll just say is gpg dash dash decrypt then specify the name of the file which is encrypted.env.gpg then close our parentheses and then just specify python3 and the name of the runbook we want to run so runbook5.py and if we hit enter that should now decrypt pass it into Nornia and now Nornia can take those credentials access the devices execute our commands and pull back all the information we need and again within our inventory Defaults, no username and password. Groups, no username and password. And our host file, no usernames, no passwords. Okay, dokes, so I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.